Tonight, new calls for justice. No justice. No peace. Protesters demand answers in the wake of another police shooting death. I just pray to God that, you know, hopefully it's not one of mine's next. We take this very seriously. Federal health officials okay the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, pushing play after that pause over rare blood clots. President Biden's first 100 days. I mean, it is a crisis. And a border crisis with no quick solution. Plus, long overdue. This is a, a new beginning for us. The U.S. recognizes the World War I era genocide in Armenia, a designation Turkey condemns. All this and more tonight on Faith Nation. State of emergency ahead of the release of police body cam video and the death of Andrew Brown. Welcome to Faith Nation. I'm John Jessup. Good evening. I'm Jenna Browder. Well, tonight, the family and attorney of Andrew Brown says they didn't get transparency after viewing police body cam footage. They say they only saw a snippet of Andrew Brown's last moments alive. Their criticism comes on top of calls for justice from the community and the nation now as North Carolina becomes the latest flashpoint. CBN's George Thomas has tonight's top story. George? Under North Carolina law, guys, a judge has to sign off on the release of uh, police body cam footage or dashboard cameras before the public or the media can view them. Well, this afternoon, members of Andrew Brown's family saw a portion of what happened on that Wednesday morning last week. But law lawyers representing the family say they need to see much more of the video than was released. Five days after Andrew Brown Jr. was killed, a few members of his family got the chance for the first time to see about 20 seconds of the body camera footage from the police officer involved in his fatal shooting. We do not feel that we got transparency. We only saw a snippet of the video. When we know that the video started before and after what they showed the family. Wow. And they determined what was pertinent. Wow. Why couldn't the family see all of the video? Right, right. Brown was killed last Wednesday when seven police officers, including members of a tactical team, were sent to his house to serve a search and arrest warrant. This has got one male, 42 years of age, no shot to the back. Brown was fleeing the scene in his car when police fired several rounds, killing him. Authorities said there was a level of risk involved with his arrest. Mr. Brown was a convicted felon with a history of resisting arrest. Our training and our policies indicate under such circumstances there is a high risk of danger. Still, a neighbor who witnessed the incident claimed Brown posed no danger to police at the time of the shooting. He was nonviolent. I can, anybody that knew him would tell you that. He was driving away. According to CNN, Brown's death certificate says he died of a wound to the head. Media reports say Brown had a criminal history dating back to the 1990s and was reportedly under surveillance for more than a year. Emotionally, physically, mentally, everything has impacted me everywhere. My kids are scared. They fear for me when I go to work. The 42-year-old Brown was a father of seven. And now I got to live every day, my newborn, without even getting a chance to meet him at all. And that's going to hurt me every day. I just want justice. An attorney with uh, Pascotank County said the reason portions of the police body cam video were blurred is because North Carolina law allows for it when it is part of an active internal investigation. Still, Brown's family wants the entire raw video released. Meanwhile, the seven deputies involved in executing the search and arrest warrant the day of Brown's death are on paid administrative leave. Guys? All right. Thank you, George. Well, Louisville City officials say they welcome a new Justice Department investigation into their police department. The DOJ announcement today coming more than a year after Louisville police shot and killed unarmed 26-year-old Brianna Taylor. The investigators will seek input from every corner of Louisville. They will work with the community, with public officials, and with law enforcement officers. All of these steps will be taken with one goal in mind, to ensure that policing policies and practices are constitutional and lawful. That is the same goal as that of our investigation in Minneapolis, 
and of every pattern or practice investigation that the department undertakes. And that was Attorney General Merrick Garland. Meantime, tonight the right to carry a gun is in the crosshairs of the Supreme Court. The nation's highest court now set to consider a major gun rights case over the right to carry a firearm in public for self-defense. The justices will hear a case that upheld New York's restrictive gun permit law. The case comes after a string of mass shootings and will be the first gun rights ruling from the court since Justice Amy Coney Barrett's entry into the Marble Palace made a 6-3 conservative majority. Well, concerning news from the CDC tonight, not only does it say a quarter of the country is leery to get a COVID shot, millions may have missed the recommended time frame to get the second dose, uh, the second of the double dose vaccines. Uh, this though, as the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is finally back online after a short pause. The senior Washington correspondent Tara Mercer has the latest. Tara? John and Jenna, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is now available again in at least 32 states. Despite reports of its possible link to extremely rare blood clots, health experts say there is no conclusive evidence. An 11-day pause on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine now lifted. Emily Murphy was one of the first in line bright and early in Michigan. You have to decide if the risk is worth it to you. 32 states are now administering it again, getting the green light from the feds who insist the benefits outweigh the risks. We can now say, you know, we take this very seriously. We've looked at it. Now let's get back and get people vaccinated. Of 8 million doses, the CDC says 15 women got rare blood clots after getting the shot. This, as a new ABC News poll shows, less than half of Americans see the Johnson & Johnson vaccine as safe. And nearly three quarters say they would not take it. Nearly 24% aren't planning to get any vaccine. And about 5 million may have missed the window for the second dose. Do not wait until it's too late because it can go so bad, so fast. Meanwhile, after more than a year, the European Union will welcome Americans back this summer if they are fully vaccinated. If you have been vaccinated, you essentially are, have access to the easy pass lane on a toll road. You can just breeze right through. The news already helping the airline industry just days after other countries like Iceland announced plans to reopen to overseas travelers. Flight searches jumped 201 percent. At the same time, that the world works to get through this pandemic, we also know that we must prepare for the next. As for that second dose of the COVID vaccine, if you are one of those who has not had it yet, health officials say you should since you are not considered fully vaccinated until that time. John and Jenna. All right, Tara Merchner, thank you. And joining us now, CBN News medical reporter Lori Johnson. Uh, Lori, this new polling showing vaccine hesitancy, how significant is that? Well, vaccine hesitancy is a real problem because if people don't get vaccinated, it's going to take us that much longer to get out of this pandemic if we ever do, thinking about things like variants that could arise among people who aren't vaccinated yet. And these variants can sometimes evade the vaccine, which could really seriously impact those of us who are fully vaccinated, including our most vulnerable, like our senior citizens. The good news, Jenna, is a lot of people who were hesitant no longer are. The number of people who said at originally they really weren't sure they were going to get a vaccine, that number has plummeted and the reasons are twofold. Number one, celebrities. A lot of people, believe it or not, said the Dolly Parton uh, her, the way she revised her song, Jolene, she made up different words to vaccine and was getting her vaccine at the same time. And then not only celebrities like Donald Trump, who said, folks, get a vaccine. I've gotten one. And religious leaders like Franklin Graham, but also people on the interpersonal level, like people's own doctors, not so much Anthony Fauci, but people's own physicians who say, yes, it's safe, get it. And people, their own pastors, and especially people in their own circle, their parents, their siblings, their children, people in, in their church who have gotten it and are happy they got it and haven't gotten any side effects. So that's what's really bringing the vaccine hesitancy down. 
It's certainly an effort that involves everyone. Uh, what about, Lori, the millions of people with one shot who've missed the window for that second dose? Where does that leave them? Well, ideally, they should go ahead and get that second dose. But we do know that just one shot offers a lot of protection, John, anywhere from like 70 to 80 percent. And so that's pretty good. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people were suggesting at first when we didn't have enough vaccines to go around that just give everybody one. Another thing is even if you've missed that three week or four week window, you can still go back that window. Those are just guidelines. And so that window actually is much more much larger than three or four weeks. So if people have missed that three or four week window, they should go back and try to get that second shot. All right, CBN medical reporter Lori Johnson, uh, thank you so much for following this for us so closely and, and so well. And um, it's great to see you this evening. Thanks. Nice to see you too. Thanks, Lori. Coming up, President Biden's approval rating after nearly 100 days in office, higher than former President Trump's, but still one of the lowest in history. We explain why next. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep as the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Life. It's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it. I came to give you life. Life to the fullest. Life in your family. Life in your finances. Life in your body, mind, and spirit. Life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Expanding government and increasing spending at an alarming rate. That is what critics say President Biden has done in his near 100 days in office. So what grade is he getting from the American people so far? And what about his inauguration promise to unify the country? CBN's Dell Hurd has this report. After almost 100 days, polling shows Joe Biden gets a higher approval rating than Donald Trump. It's still one of the lowest at this point in any administration since World War II. Biden's 52 percent approval is much higher than Trump's 42 percent, but he's also received much more positive media coverage than Donald Trump. His handling of the COVID pandemic has the approval of 64 percent of Americans, but his handling of the border crisis has the disapproval of 53 percent. Over 172,000 migrants were stopped at the border last month, the most in 20 years. I wish he'd talk about the crisis on the border, which he created. I mean, it is a crisis. I've been down there uh, with Governor Ducey to see uh, that he's created this crisis. Vice President Kamala Harris claims the crisis has no quick solution. It's not going to be solved overnight. It's a complex issue. Listen, if this were easy, it would have been handled years ago. If parents and if children cannot literally eat, if they cannot have the basic essential things that everyone needs to live, of course they're going to flee and that's what we're saying. By a two to one margin, Americans believe Biden should make major changes to his proposals to have bipartisan Republican support. But he passed the COVID relief bill without GOP support 
and suggested he might do the same with his $2.3 trillion infrastructure bill. And he signed 40 executive orders, the highest of any recent president. Republican Senator Rand Paul says he's still waiting on the promise of unity Biden made at his inauguration. I haven't seen any of that. I think what I've seen so far is it's Biden's way or the highway. I don't see anything that looks like they want to work together. Moderate Democratic Senator Joe Manchin says he doesn't support the administration's huge infrastructure plan. He's calling for billions in non-infrastructure spending to be taken out. Some Democrats say he's standing in the way of the president's agenda. I'm not a roadblock at all. The best politics is good government. I'm not going to be part of blowing up this Senate of ours or basically this democracy of ours or the republic that we have. Meanwhile, Biden is expanding government and increasing spending at a record pace. The U.S. government spent over $900 billion in March alone, more than double from one year ago. Democrat Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says the Biden administration has exceeded expectations of so-called progressives. The active invitation and willingness and collaboration uh, with progressives in his first 100 days, um, or almost 100 days, uh, has been very impressive. In his speech to Congress, Biden is expected to announce a $1.8 trillion package funding education, child care, and paid family leave, along with more tax hikes. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Thanks, Dale. Well, today at the White House, CBN's David Brody asked Press Secretary Jen Psaki about unity and the president's bold agenda. This doesn't seem like unity at all. The president's view is that bringing the country together is bringing the American people together. So when I say he's, uh, he is focused on uh, re bringing, you know, bringing people together, bringing Democrats and Republicans together, he's not talking about solving bipartisanship in the, this zip code here. He is talking about proposing policies that address the crises that we're facing, whether it's getting the pandemic under control, putting people back to work. A lot of those policies he's proposed, whether it's the American Rescue Plan or the American Jobs Plan, are supported by the vast majority of the American public. And David is getting his steps in and joins us now. David, that press conference that you were at, uh, we just heard Jen Psaki there say that she wasn't talking about bipartisanship in the Beltway. Is that a tacit admission that President Biden's not going to be able to get Republicans on board for the administration's priorities? Yeah, I think so. And I, I also think it's a, it's a way that this White House has pretty much operated to say, look, the bipartisanship they're talking about, this unity that we hear so much about, uh, has to do with polling. In other words, if it's polling over 50 percent, then apparently all the American people like it, and therefore they're going to go for it on, um, you know, everything from the stimulus bill to the American jobs bill and all of that. And that's what they're deciding to do. But I thought it was interesting when she mentioned the zip code uh, in Washington. Basically, that's code for. It's not even code for. She said it. Uh, but it's basically saying, hey, look, we're putting up our hands here and saying, you know what? We can't figure out Washington. So, uh, and you know what? Newsflash. Joe Biden's been in Washington for almost 50 years. He hasn't been able to figure it out. And so have a lot of other people on both the Republican and Democrat side. Yeah. Uh, well, David, great job at the White House today. I want to talk to you about Biden's first 100 days. I think you probably heard that sound bite. Um, he got a seal of approval from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Your takeaways from these first 100 days? Well, I mean, I, do we have four and a half hours? Do, do, is that how long this live shot is? Look, uh, it, it's been a liberal smorgasbord, uh, and don't take my word for it. Uh, even Biden, folks close to the Biden administration will say it has been a liberal smorgasbord. Uh, and th they know time is of the essence, and that's what they've done these first 100 days. In other words, they want to pr propose this FDR vision for America. Uh, they're, they're looking at COVID as being a main reason for that. And so... That's what they've done. And, uh, you know, the question, and it was part of my question today with Jen Psaki is, but what about H.R. 1, right, this federalizing of elections? What about budget reconciliation that you're doing? What about the Equality Act? What about D.C. statehood? You put it all together, there's a lot of controversial stuff this administration has done in the first 100 days. And the, the question now becomes, as we go to 2022, how much is it going to come back to haunt uh, Biden, he probably will be dealing with a Republican majority in the House, maybe in both the House and the Senate, possibly. 
David, in the last 40 seconds or so, let's talk about GOP division. Today, Liz Cheney, the number three House Republican, called Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy the leaders of the Republican Party. This seemed to be an attempt to distance the GOP from President Trump. And then you have a new anti-Trump conservative group that is accusing 100 congressional Republicans of trying to undermine Democratic values in the fallout following November's election and January's insurrection. And then you have Republicans like Congressman Doug Collins, who says that he's not going to be seeking re-election. David, how can Republicans win back the House and Senate when you have uh, people not running for re-election, the power of incumbency, and the division in the House and Senate? Well, yeah, I've got to tell you, John, look, the, the, the bottom line on all of this is that the, the mainstream media is going to run with Republicans are divided. But here's the truth. Let me, let me speak the truth right now. This is Donald Trump's party still. Uh, this is MAGA Nation still. Uh, the question at this point is, be, is what does MAGA 2.0 look like? I think that's what we watch. And the way we watch it is in 2022, when Donald Trump supports X, Y, and Z candidate. And in November of 2022, when all is said and done and the dust is cleared, we'll find out what his track record is. And then we go to 2024. Wait and see. Okay. Thanks, David. You bet. And when we come back, the U.S. finally recognizing the Armenian genocide, the announcement that has Turkey fiercely pushing back. On October 1st, 1961, history was made when a tiny station began transmitting the first signals of the Christian Broadcasting Network. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. And now, a new era has begun with the all-new CBN News Channel. Just moments ago, the Iron Dome intercepted an incoming rocket right on the Gaza border. And ministering in this area, spiritual warfare is definitely involved. A 24-7 news network bringing you the news you want from a source you can trust. In Kenya, 40% of the medical services are actually provided by these Christian hospitals. Let's talk about the economy. Believers here are joining together to win people to Jesus Christ. All your favorite shows now in one place. Go to CBNNewsChannel.com to find out how to get the CBN News Channel on your TV all day, every day. CBN News. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest. Life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your everyday. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. And welcome back. Fallout over a historic first. President Biden's use of one word has shaken the status quo overseas. Yeah, that word, genocide. The White House officially recognizing the massacre of Armenians in World War I as just that. And it has Turkey pushing back. CBN's Chris Mitchell has the story from our Jerusalem Bureau. For years, the White House recognized Armenian Remembrance Day while avoiding the term genocide mainly to steer clear of potentially alienating Turkey, a NATO ally. But the White House statement said, each year on this day, we remember the lives of all those who died in the Ottoman era Armenian genocide and recommit ourselves to preventing such an atrocity from ever again occurring. American Armenians hailed the decision they see as long overdue. We worked very hard to see uh, America recognize the Armenian genocide and so this is a, a new beginning for us. Uh, I feel it's a new beginning for my children. On Twitter, Turkey's foreign minister condemned the declaration, writing, words cannot change or rewrite history. And Turkey entirely rejects it. Beginning in April 1915, Ottoman authorities deported, massacred, or marched to death one and a half million Armenians in the first mass extermination of the 20th century. Turkey doesn't deny the deaths from that era, yet refuses to call it genocide. 
The government maintains the death toll is inflated, and it all resulted from civil unrest. Here in Jerusalem's old city, the Armenian quarter reminds us of this community's rich Christian heritage. Still, constant reminders like this poster signify the scars and memories the genocide left on Armenians here in Jerusalem and around the world. During a ceremony in Armenia, Armenia's Prime Minister called Biden's statement a powerful step on the way to acknowledging the truth. The White House announcement will likely cast a chilling impact on U.S.-Turkish relations. Its foreign ministry said it would open a deep wound that undermines mutual trust and friendship, and Turkey summoned the U.S. ambassador to protest President Biden's decision. For now, though, Armenians worldwide feel an historic injustice is being righted. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream, the chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities, the chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? Finally tonight, refusing to hate. That was part of Tyler Perry's inspiring message last night at the Oscars. The actor and producer accepting an award for his humanitarian work during the pandemic also called for unity. Perry, who was once homeless himself, shared a story about a time when he gave a homeless woman a pair of shoes. So anyone who wants to meet me in the middle to refuse hate, to refuse blanket judgment, and to help lift someone's feet off the ground, this one is for you too. God bless you and thank you. Perry urged people to, quote, meet in the middle and to put themselves in another's shoes, or maybe, as in Perry's case, even buy them a pair. What a great message, Jenna. Yeah, more of that, please. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us this Monday. Hope to see you again tomorrow.